Are you sick and fed up of losing your drives out to the right, often losing your golf ball and definitely losing distance? Well, the good news is in this video, we have three tips that are really, really simple that are gonna make your drives longer and straighter. And the best part about it is, it's with no extra effort. Yes, welcome to me and my golf. Now, if you want to improve your game, then consider subscribing. We're here to help you get better. And if you enjoy this video and it helps you with your driving, make sure you hit the like. Hello and welcome to Golfers Transformed, our new show where we transform the golf swings of our members. So we've just had a great lesson with Jimmy, a member of Team Me and My Golf, and Jimmy, with the driver, had a two-way miss. Now, he was also losing a lot of distance as a result of this as well. So what we had is a natural shot which wanted to go to the right, but then a compensation which would make it go to the left. But Andy, he was losing a stack of distance as well, good athletes. What were the two main things that we were seeing? Okay, so yeah, he was a good athlete, really strong, up to like 117 to 119 miles per hour club head speed, but not maximizing the distance. Now, the key thing was really that he had this two-way miss, but we always start at the basics. You've got to look at that first. And the first thing we noticed with Jimmy was that his ball position was way back in the stance. You'll see on screen here, the ball was way back in the stance, closer to the middle than the front heel. Even though Jimmy knew it should be more towards the front of the stance, he still had it there. And also there was a slight issue with the grip. The left hand was a little bit too high in the palm, which was causing the club face to be open. Now, let's just explain that a little more because this is really important to understand, especially if you've got this big high slice that you hit. Well, when the ball is back in the stance too much, a couple of things happen. First of all, you're gonna hit a little bit more down on the golf ball, but also the further the ball is back in the stance, the more the club face wants to point to the right. You can see here, look, that, that face yeah. now is out to the right. The more the ball is forward in the stance, the more we will hit up on the golf ball. We know that's going to help with yardage, but also look how square are the faces now towards the target. That gives us so much more chance. Whereas if it's back, straight away, it's bringing that right side into place. So a quick change in ball position can make a huge difference, and it certainly did with Jimmy. And the reason we changed the grip, we're just going to show actually Jimmy now at impact to the driver. You'll see that that club face, when he struck the golf ball, was way open, but also very lofted. This was causing a real high flight, high launch with a load of spin, like up towards 5,000 RPM with the driver, that's much. no good. That's, like, that's not good at all. So that was robbing him of distance. Now, because of the positioning of his left hand, this was causing the club face in the downswing to be a little too open. Then when the club is open, we have to release early, we add loft, and that takes out the speed completely. So a slight grip change made a huge difference. So this is what we did, first of all, really simple. And this is key because as we said, I said to Jimmy, Jimmy, where should the ball be with a, uh, with a driver? He says, oh, opposite the left heel. Well, he knew it, but he still wasn't doing it. So make sure when you're on the range, you test, understand exactly where that ball position is with the driver. Generally, golfers have it too far back. So you can see I've got these crosshairs in here now, alignment sticks, and I'm gonna make sure I'm setting up and this left heel is right up against that stick. This for Jimmy was, wow, this feels so different. This feels quite <laughs> really strange. But, but it's interesting because he knew that it should be there. So he knew that the alignment stick should be there and that's how it should look. But then the feel was so weird, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, he was like, well, this feels totally different. But now this gives him more chance to square the face. Now the issue was, put the ball without changing the grip. <laughs> well, now he's gonna hit it even higher. So this is why we needed to change that grip. But we also we just wanted to take out the right side of play. If we could take out that right side, have a more predictable shot, we could then start to lower the flight and hit a little longer. So first of all, this was the big thing, and now from this change, the start direction was straight away a lot straighter. Come on then Andy, let's see you hit one then. It's gonna be a high bomb, I'm hitting it well at the moment, especially mm. with this new driver. <laughs> oh. He's actually telling the truth for once, look at that. Yeah, very that was nice. really good. Oh, very nice, right. downwind here let's, in the grand. Let's get into <clears throat> the grip then, let's see what we've got with this. Okay, now the interesting part about this, I might come a little closer to you guys here, that Jimmy actually had, you know, you hear, oh, you need to see two to three knuckles. Well, Jimmy had two to three knuckles visible. Mm. The issue that it was, was more really where it was in the hand. It was way too much in the palm. And when it gets too much in the palm of the hand, it tends to want to open the club face on the way down. So what we did, we wanted to put it more in the base of the fingers here. Base of that forefinger, across the base of the little finger. And now, we say this so often, we should be able to rest that club underneath the heel pad of the hand. This is so important. This now, straight away, as soon as he held the grip, he went, I feel like the club wants to close. I said, great, because you keep hitting it right. So <laughs> this is a good thing. It was a good feeling to have. And straight away, 
the shots that he started hitting there started straight or even went left. Yeah. So he couldn't even hit it to the right from there. This is something that you need to do right now. Pause the video, get a golf club. Can you hold it up like that? And give it a test and let us know whether that's actually what you're doing naturally or whether you have to change things to make that happen. And don't, don't underestimate the placement of where this mm -hmm. is. It's not just about the knuckles, it's where this sits in the hand, which is re really makes a difference to the face. It's the most important part of the lead hand on the golf club. You know, you can sometimes get away with a slightly weak grip, but as soon as you get that club up in the palm there, high up in the palm into the thumb area, it's really difficult. Okay, let me hit one more, and then we're gonna give you one more thing that we did actually after the lesson, which made yeah. a big difference to him as well. Nice, very good, and I think, look, one thing that we bit mentioned already, a bit toe, it was good though, it was okay. A good toe. A good toe. One thing we mentioned already, Jimmy was an athlete, he could move quickly. Now the reason he could do this is because he was actually a really good baseball player, a good hitter. So as much as he'd created a really good body movement by playing baseball and created that speed, unfortunately he caused a slight problem in how he used his hands and his arms, hadn't he? Yeah, and well, we actually videoed him in slow-mo <laughs> doing his baseball swing. And when you look at his baseball swing, generally we see this with a lot of baseball players, is that when you hit the baseball, his face would be wide open like this. We have this sort of late release. There's no release at all, so really. There's is no there release. So we just hidden it like this. So there's no release. And you look at the face, and if you look at the slow mo on Jimmy's there, that face is wide open. So the final part, we, which we did with him after the lesson, actually, was like, look, this is what you need to do moving forward. Is we just encouraged him to actually rotate the toe a little earlier past the golf ball. We said, look. I actually grabbed the, the club and I just turned the club. I says, what do you feel? He says, well, I feel the toes moving over. I can feel it turning. That feels different. He says, almost feel like I'm shaking hands with this right hand. And this was a great feel for him. I got him doing one-handed swings without the club, just feeling like he's rotating that palm more over and down. And then straight away, he hit a couple of shots down this end of the range. Yeah. And he was hitting these low draws compared to these high, weak slices that were going nowhere. Yeah. It was a massive difference. And look, the, the, the main thing with this was really, by moving the ball forward and changing the grip, he hardly hit any to the right. I think he hit one shot to the right. The main thing that Andy was doing by showing how to release the club better was really just trying to lower the ball flight and make it stronger, make the ball speed faster and not carry it 260. He should be carrying it 280, 290. So he's probably losing 30 yards. Yeah, and it was a, just a nice feel for him. The mm. only thought that we gave him in the golf swing, and I said to him, look, make sure now just you use the golf ball as your guide. So if you're hitting it high right and the ball position is a good place and you've got a good grip, you haven't closed or released that club face early enough. If you hit a snap hook, you've probably released it a little bit too early. So now he's got some feedback to go, well, okay, now I've just got to work on one thing, which is the closure or the release of the club. And he's going to be doing it based on what he sees, but also based on him making sure the ball position's in a good place making sure his grip's in a good place. And now he's got that one thought through the golf ball. Yeah. And it was amazing to see the difference, especially when we finished off down here as yeah, well. Yeah, absolutely. And look, and if you think about this, it's inevitable that we're going to have a miss. You're going to have a consistent miss. But when you've got a two-way miss, it's just a nightmare. So at least what we did with Jimmy was we got rid of the right and said, well, look, do you know what? As Andy said, you may every now and then get a one that goes a little bit to the left, but that's fine. You just don't feed as much release into that shot. But look, as soon as you can get rid of the two-way miss, you will save yourself a lot of money in golf balls. So there we go. Hope you enjoyed that. That was a great lesson with Jimmy. Some big results that he got there. And if you want to check out the whole lesson, it's exclusive to our members over at meandmygolf.com. So click the link in the description and check it out.